Hey everyone and welcome to the end of week stock market update. What an incredibly volatile week we had here having some very large moves here on the market. Um, all of this is due to the volatility um, spiking here which is creating these larger than expected moves in the market compared to when we are at less volatile regions. Um, very hard to swing trade in these types of situations due to the fact that you have such large intraday swings, hard to get good entries um, on anything. So I did not really trade this week a whole, a whole lot, kind of just sat on my hands and watched to see what this market was doing and where it could go. Uh, I'm going to be going over a few of the key levels that I want to be watching into next week and kind of for the rest of the month of December and seeing if we can hold those levels, seeing if it'll act as support or if we break through those levels and start to see more selling on the market as a whole. So I'll be going over now the indices to kind of give you an overview of where they sit at and those levels that I'm looking at. So we'll start here with the ES futures. We can see that we do have this daily squeeze firing to the downside, giving us this large move down here. Um, today, it looked like we are going to break this previous low. We did break it a little bit, but I thought we were going to close below it. We did not. The last about half an hour of the market, we did see a lot of buying coming into it, which gave us this um, higher close than I was expecting. We are still trading a little bit below this 50 simple moving average, but it's basically right at it. So this is one level I'm watching that this could potentially be a support for the market, um, but that's not really one of the key levels I'm looking at. One of the key levels I'm looking at, I'll pull out the Fibonacci retracement, and if we take this previous low and then our high right here, we can see that this 50% retracement is acting as a support on that big flush day. It came here, bounced off of it, basically held it here again, and then today we held it once more. So this is definitely a key level for me to be watching. It's basically 4,500, which is a large psych psychological number as well within the market. So if this level can hold, I think we could see a reverse off that and potentially the Santa rally. Or if we break this level, we could see a lot more selling down into these previous lows here. Another thing to be looking at on the ES and why I think that that 50% retracement could be a good place of support is if we look at the weekly time frame here on the ES. So every time we get a reversion back down to this 21 EMA or the mean, we get a nice bounce off of it. You get the flush, you bounce. You flushed here, you bounced. You flushed here, you bounced. All this last two weeks of selling and all this fear that's happening in the market, um, doesn't really scare me due to the weekly structure still being very bullish on the market here. All we got this week was a flush down to the 21 EMA and it even closed quite a bit above that 21 EMA. I'm not saying that the market's going to start going directly up again, but as long as this weekly time frame can hold that 21 EMA, that could potentially be a great place to start buying some longs. Looking into next year, 2022, I think that this could potentially be another great support here, but that does not mean it has to be. Another thing I like to see here is that we do have a squeeze starting to form again, so we could also see a consolidation here at that 21 as this squeeze forms before it makes its next move higher or lower. So that's the ES. Next one we'll look here is the Qs. Qs are very, very similar to the ES, having this daily squeeze fire. They're actually trading above their 50 simple moving average, which is nice to see, but they did have a large flush today. Another level I'm looking at with these ones, um, very similar to the ES as well, is that 50% retracement once again. So just like the ES, the Qs are holding that 50%. They bounced off of it nicely today. 
just as I said with the ES, if you break that level, a lot more selling in my opinion. If you can hold that level, I think we could get a bounce or at least a reversion back up to that 21 EMA. Um, just the level I'm definitely keep my eyes on between the ES and the Qs here. So now if we look at the weekly time frame on the Qs as well, very similar story to the ES. If we look back in history, we can see that you get this push up and do about plus two or even plus three ATR. At some point, you're going to need a reversion back down to this 21. The market needs to have pullbacks in order for a continuation to the upside. And you can see that's what happens here quite often. You get this push, you get the flush down to the 21, you get the push, flush down to the 21, you get a push down to the 21, and that's exactly what we did here once again. You get this push up into the extended levels at plus three ATR. The market is more has a higher probability of reverting back down to the mean, and it didn't even come all the way down to the 21 this week. So there's always that potential for next week. It could get that whole flush down here, or you could potentially bounce off these levels because it is at a much um, better level and not at these extended ones over here. So that's the Qs. Now let us take a look at the Dow. Uh, the Dow was definitely looking a lot weaker compared to ES and tech, which makes sense because tech is definitely doing a lot better and tech is heavily weighted within the ES and especially with this COVID variant that was discovered, the sectors within Dow will get hit hardest with that news. So we got this push off the squeeze into that plus three ATR and have completely rejected down to minus three ATR and bounced off those levels as we should. Usually at these levels, there is a very, very high probability of it reversing to the opposite way. So that's what we have here, getting close to that eight EMA and kind of rejecting it here today. Now, if we look at the weekly time frame, some good things here, some bad things. So we still have stacked EMAs, which is nice to see. That's definitely a bullish thing to be looking at in the market, but we are closing below that 21 EMA, which I do not like to see. We can see previous times, we've held those levels very nicely and then have bounced off of those. And now we are finally getting a few closes below that. And we also have this weekly squeeze that could potentially fire to the downside. I do still like that the histogram is above the zero line, but if we start to see that get below in some red bars, this squeeze could fire to the downside and we could see a lot more selling within the Dow. So definitely something to keep your eye on in the next few weeks. So last but not least here, we are going to look at the Russell. And just kind of like the Dow, this one went up to those extended levels at plus three, came all the way back down to them at minus three. So one of the things I'm looking at with the Russell here is that it used to be in basically a range, just kind of bouncing back and forth. You have your uh, resistance up here and you have your support down here. I thought we were going to break out and continue, but obviously that didn't happen and it fell back within this range. Uh, the thing I would definitely keep my eye on is the supports at these previous lows. It basically came this week and touched them. Um, probably could get a little bit more, but basically came down to that support and next week you need to see if those levels will hold or if we do see a further breakdown of this breaking those levels and if it does break those old support levels you could see a lot more selling with that one as well now if we come to the weekly time frame just like the Dow some good things some bad things so we have our stack DMAs which as, as I said before is bullish but with the Dow we have now two closes and it actually kind of rejected that 21 EMA this time which I do not like to see we have our weekly squeeze Histogram is still above the zero, but with these closes below that 21 and even below this 50, this one is not looking as good as the others. Could potentially see this one start to make some lower lows here on this weekly time frame. But as I said before, it hasn't broken that support line. So definitely keep your eye on that for next week and weeks ahead, if it can hold that or if it breaks. 
So now the main thing I was watching this week was the VIX. So the VIX is showing us all the volatility here. Let me clean this up quick. There we go. So VIX is showing us all the volatility within the market. And I have some support and resistance lines drawn on here. And we can see that we do have a strong support way down here at around $15. Got a push off of that into the $20 region. Um, held there and then that's when we just skyrocketed and that's where we've been seeing all of our selling come from has been accompanied by this daily squeeze on the VIX which is propelling it way up to that upside today was a little scary we did get this large run on the VIX pushing 35 I thought we were potentially going to come up and touch this resistance line at 37 but I was actually really happy to see it close below this resistance line here, so, um, which is kind of letting me know that we could potentially start to roll back over, if not to about this 29 level, hopefully down back to these 25s, which would be a much better place um, for the volatility to be sitting at. Ideally, I want it anywhere between 20 and this 15 region, which means the market usually continues to the upside very nicely. But yes, we do get these spikes in volatility every once in a while, and we just need to monitor it and see what levels it can hold, or if we could maybe see this start to roll over back down to these healthier levels and much less volatility within the market. So next week, I think one of my main focuses will be on the VIX to see if we get that push up into 37, which would give us a lot more selling within the market, or if we finally do start to roll over, hopefully down to these $20 levels, which should give us a continuation to that upside in the overall market as a whole. So hopefully this gives you a better picture of where the market is at and what you could be seeing in the following weeks and months. Hopefully you all had a great week trading and I will see you later.